Hi everyone, I'm Birgit and I want to welcome you all to my kitchen today and I'm going to show you how to make a tzop and that is bread that is braided and I really enjoyed eating that when I lived in Germany one of my favorite breads for breakfast or for coffee time so this is what you need on ingredients for this recipe and that is some some butter milk eggs dry yeast, some flour and some sugar, and a saucepan to melt the milk and the butter, and a nice big mixing bowl. First you're going to put 150 grams of butter in this pan, or two-thirds of a cup. If the butter is salted, please melt it separately and don't put it with the milk. So I weighed out my butter here and I'm going to add two cups of milk. And then I'm going to warm that all up so that the butter is melted. So while I was heating up the butter, I made sure I kept stirring so that uh, it would melt nicely together. So now in this saucepan, we're going to add two eggs. In German, you would say zwei Eier. So we have milk, butter, and eggs together. Now we're going to add the yeast. So now we're going to add the yeast, uh, uh, four teaspoons of yeast. Okay, so my German friends, this was trockene Hefe, dry yeast, dry active yeast. Now we're going to add some sugar. So I'm going to add three tablespoons of sugar. In German, you would say Zucker. Drei Esslöffel Zucker. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to whisk this all together, the butter and the milk and the dry yeast and the eggs, and I'm going to let it sit for five minutes. So after five to ten minutes, you see the yeast is uh, activated and now we're going to add it to the thousand grams of flour or eight cups of flour or in German it's called a thousand gram meal. And in the middle of this bowl, I just pushed with the fork, I just pushed the flour on the side so that I have a nice little hole in the middle. So with this nice space there that I made in the middle, I'm just going to take this activated yeast here and I'm going to pour it in the middle slowly and stir with my fork slowly the flour, uh, mixing the flour and the other in liquid ingredients is together. And so I just keep stirring and stirring with my fork and adding little by little the liquid ingredients. So I'm just going to keep stirring. You're stirring in the flour and the liquid and mixing it together. So I did as much as I could with my fork and now I've put on my sanitary gloves. Some people don't like to use gloves, but I do. And so I'm going to continue uh, mixing the flour together with the uh, liquid ingredients until I get a nice texture. So I am getting there. I keep just turning it and pressing down and turning and pressing down. This does not work well in a mixer because it's a very dense dough that we have here. I just want to show you how it looks and the bowl is practically dry. And so now I'm just going to place it in there and cover it up for at least an hour.
So I covered my bowl up with a saran wrap. You can use a towel or a lid, whatever you have available, and let it sit maybe for an hour and a half. When you see it rise up, and then you know it's time for the next stage. So now the dough has expanded to twice the size. I can show you here. That is wonderful. So now I'm just going to take the dough out of the bowl here and that comes out really easy. I put some flour on the counter there and now I'm going to work the dough. So I'm going to put on my gloves and spread some flour. So I'm just going to work the dough like this, pressing down and getting all the air bubbles out. Yeah. Do this for a few minutes. So what I'm going to do now is cut a little piece off the end here, like that. And I'm gonna use that for the special decoration that is going on the top. So I'm gonna roll it out. Have some flour here. Roll this out. So what I'm going to do now is make some round pieces. I'm going to use this glass here and I'm going to cut out some nice round pieces here. See if I can get five in here. Like that. So and then I'm going to lay them one over the other like this. That. And I have enough to do maybe two more of these round pieces. So this is going to be the decoration, the special decoration on top of the top. And you're going to see in a minute what it's going to be. So I'm making two more, so that'll be seven round pieces. See that? So now I'm going to roll this together tightly here. Just roll it all together like that. And then I'm going to take my special knife here and cut this right in the middle in half like that. And there you see we have a beautiful rose for on top later on, on each bread. So this recipe is for two top bread, two braided breads. That looks beautiful, I think. So now we're going to, or I'm going to cut the rest of the dough perfectly in half. And you see that's about like that and two balls. Now I have my two balls here and I'm going to cut them in half now. So then I'll have four equal balls. Four pieces here like this and we're going to start with the two of them. These two are for one bread and these are for the other bread. Okay. So we've got these two pieces and we're going to roll them out into two long pieces. So now you've rolled out two long pieces exactly the same length and you're going to cross them over like this. 
Okay, everyone, you have this X in front of you. Now, this is the hardest part, for me, the hardest part, too, to remember. So this is one line, and this is one line. So on this line here, you take the first one, and you put it in the middle. And you take the other end of it, and put it towards the outside. Now you've got this, this line here. You take the first piece, put it in the middle, the second piece on the outside. Now you've got this piece here, in the middle here, and the other piece on the outside. Now, you put this one in the middle, this one on the outside, this one in the middle, and this one goes over here, I think. Okay, now this is the end part where you just tuck everything together the best you can. This is how it is. And now I'm going to tuck this under a little bit and make it flat here on the end, flatten this out a little bit, because there I'm going to put this beautiful rose design that I made before, uh, flatten a little more here so that it'll fit right on top on the end. And now we're going to put a uh, egg yolk on top, brush some egg yolk on top of it. So everyone, I'm going to just brush some of this, um, in German you call it Eigelb, egg yolk on top here. And you see that the first one that I did has already risen a little bit, uh, expanded a little bit. So I'm going to preheat my oven just at 100 degrees and turn it off so that my um, bread here can rise nicely. And I'm going to let it sit for another hour before I bake it at uh, 380 degrees. and. We'll see, it could take uh, 20 or 25 minutes uh, till the bread is done. But for now, it's going to just rise for another hour. So I just let this dough rise for an hour. It was sitting in the oven and you can see it's looking fantastic. And now it's going to go in the oven to bake. So now I'm going to preheat my oven with a uh, conventional bake at uh, 380 and um, yeah I have a gas oven so it could be different with your electric oven. So now I'm going to put both of them in the oven and I'm going to set the oven at 22 minutes and see if it's golden brown like i say with an electric oven it could be different timing so now the bread's finished i took it out after 25 minutes of baking and i think it looks great i haven't done this for a long time and so i'm going to wait for an hour for it to cool down and then i'm going to try a piece and show it to you all just having a late snack trying the tzopf bread. It tastes very good and it's excellent for breakfast with butter and jam on it. It's not as light and fluffy as the Easter bread that I did last week but it does have good flavor and I just want to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recipe and please join me again in the next video.